What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I've picked up a set of airbags for the Duramax here so that it won't be squatting whenever uh, I hook it to the gooseneck. And uh, I did a lot of research on different ways to go about doing this. I was thinking about putting a block back there. And uh, anyway, I decided to go with the airbags because of the adjustability and the lighting is horrible. But uh, I can set it wherever I want. I did not get the air compressor kit uh, to do this, I'm going to air it up with a uh, with my shop compressor here, and I have a portable air compressor that hooks in your cigarette lighter as well. So if I need to adjust them, uh, if that does prove to be too much of a pain in the butt, if I find myself constantly having to mess with them, uh, I will probably get the onboard compressor. But uh, from what I've seen, a lot of those things are not really that durable, and I hate to pay the money for something that's not probably going to last. But maybe the newer ones are better. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, so that's what we're going to be doing here. I got them in the package right here. I went with the Firestone airbags right there, as you can see, because the Firestone airbags have a metal top on them right here, where the uh, other airbags, uh, shoot, I forgot the name of them, but they have a uh, plastic top on them. And those plastic top airbags, are not all that great uh, because I have some on the front of my Volvo 18 wheeler that come from the factory and they're made of plastic and uh, for some reason they they redesign them but for some reason those stupid things blow out about every 200,000 miles they blow out the ones with the metal top on them likes on the trailer in the back of the truck will last 15 years or so uh, so I don't know what the deal is with the plastic ones. They just I don't know I've not had good luck with them And so I wasn't buying the ones with the plastic ones when I could get metal so that's why I went with the uh, The Firestone over the whatever the other name brand is I'm trying to think of Airlift 5000 I think is the other ones that, that had the plastic tops and bottoms on them uh, I believe is what they were but anyway, the other thing I've researched was is the gross vehicle weight ratio that's on the door sticker of these trucks and uh, it has another little sticker down there that tells you the carrying capacity of the truck, uh, everything loaded out. So it's taking that gross vehicle weight ratio and subtracting the curb weight of the truck. And it tells me that this truck should be able to tote 2,731 pounds. That's passengers, cargo, and everything, uh, which is really not a whole lot. But uh, the three quarter ton that I have, the Dodge, is only rated at 2,200 pounds of cargo capacity is what it says on the sticker and I've seen some three quarter tons uh, as low as 1800 pounds so evidently if you uh, use your truck to haul or tow anything besides your fat butt around uh, you're probably going to be over the gross vehicle weight ratio on that sticker is what it seems to me because uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of weight to add up to 1800 or 2000 pounds uh, in fact I know a lot of uh, people hunt and they go get a pallet of corn. A lot of people have uh, farms and ranches, cows. They go get a ton of feed. Well, that's 2,000 pounds in the bed of the truck. You're over gross vehicle weight ratio already. Time you get your fat butt in the truck and a lot of you have a toolbox stuff over there so you're going to be way over. Uh, so that is what it is. I looked at uh, the dually trucks of this year model the gross vehicle weight ratio in them for the GMC and the Chevrolet Dooley's of this particular year model is 11,400 pounds, which is only 1,500 pounds more than this truck. But the Dooley weighs 500 pounds more than this truck already, so you're only increasing your actual legal gross vehicle weight ratio by 1,000 pounds because the Dooley has two extra tires and wheels, it's about 100 pounds a piece. You have two dually fenders, it's about 100 pounds a piece. And then you have your dually hub adapters on the front that are thick steel, and they're probably 30 or 40 pounds a piece, I don't know, but it's somewhere around 500 pounds the dually truck weighs more than this truck. So your net gross vehicle weight ratio increase is only 1,000 pounds on these. Now, the new uh, one-ton trucks, GM just started doing this in 2020, I think, because up until then, they, they upped it to like 13,000 pounds uh, gross vehicle weight ratio on the dualies. But the new ones I think are 14,000 pounds like the Ram and the Ford have been for a little while now. So that is a considerable difference. But on um, this particular year model truck uh, going with the dually, 
wouldn't really give me much uh, from the looks of it. And uh, the single rear wheel, obviously it's easier to get around and all that stuff. Uh, being as how I got two trucks, maybe it would have made more sense to go with a dually, but I'm not going to be over on axle, I don't think, and definitely not tire and wheel because the tires and wheels I have on here are better than what the factory tires and wheels were. And these are 7,200 and something pound uh, rated for the tires and for the wheels. The uh, door sticker on the truck, when they rate the rear axle ratio, uh, our weight rating is 6,500 pounds on the rear axle. That is on the factory stock tires and wheels. That's actually not the axle rating uh, because the axle rating on this truck should be a little bit more than that. It'll definitely take more than 6,500 pounds. Uh, it's the same axle and the dually except for two things. The uh, single wheel trucks have the axle tube diameter shrink down at the wheel to three and a half inches. It comes out of the rear end at four inches. I shrink down to three and a half as it goes to the wheel. The dualies stay four inches all the way out and the uh, dualies are eight inches wider. That's the uh, two differences on the rear end. Let's see if I can show where it's neck down at. So you can see what I'm talking about here. I don't know if you can even see that, but maybe the camera will pick it up. I think you can see the taper right there. As soon as it comes out of the pumpkin, it's four inch and it tapers down right there. Uh, my Dodge has the same rear end in it. It's an AAM rear end, and the Dodge uses a four inch axle tube all the way out. Uh, so I don't know why Chevrolet, I guess they thought they'd save a little bit of money on some metal uh, right there. But that's another thing that make the dually weigh a little bit more too is, uh, you know, the axle tubes being a little bit bigger and it being eight inches wider as well. So anyway, manufacturers are just now in the recent years starting to uh, get the gross vehicle weight ratio rating on the sticker up to where it really should have been a long time ago. They advertised, oh, you can put 3,500 pounds in the back of this truck. Yeah, maybe so if according to that sticker, if it's a regular cab, strip down roll up window truck with nothing on it nobody buys a truck like that anymore nobody uh, used to people would buy them as work trucks now the only people buying those is maybe your city or town or somebody like that that's actually a work truck anybody's buying it for personal use and actually wants to use the truck they're going to buy it loaded out lariat uh you know laramie whatever denali gmc whatever it's going to be a loaded out pretty well loaded out truck when you had all those options then you have no payload because the way they rate the truck it doesn't make any sense so if you get your fat butt in there and your old lady and your kids and you want to go to town to the feed store and get a, uh, a pallet of corn uh, your three-quarter ton truck can't even legally haul that according to the sticker they got on the door makes no sense whatsoever uh, do I think it's unsafe no I think that's stupid how they got the rated the truck rated because a three-quarter ton truck should be able to haul way more than 2,000 pounds in the bed because uh, that's not very much weight at all uh, even if you want to go to Home Depot and get some plywood or something for your house, fix up your deer camp. Uh, you know, you should be able to put quite a bit of plywood in the back of one of these trucks. Uh, but the way they got them rated, yeah, not so much. So anyway, we're not going to worry about a whole lot on the uh, gross vehicle weight ratio. Uh, and there is, it's one of those deals that, for the most part, I don't think you'll have any problems unless you're using one of these trucks to commercially tow with up and down the interstates, going across the scales. Yeah, you could run into issues, and I suppose if you were to get in an accident or something like that, I suppose you could run into issues with that as well. But I think it's one of those things like, uh, depends on who you ask. Uh, the speed limit in Louisiana is 55 miles an hour on two-lane highway. In Texas, it's 70 or 75 miles an hour. Uh, does that make it unsafe uh, to drive on the same road at 25 miles an hour faster? Uh, or 20 miles an hour faster. I don't think so. It's a two lane road. It's smooth. It's just like one that's just one state over. What's the difference? You know, kind of the same thing with these uh, trucks. And a lot of times, depends on who is enforcing the law, uh, you can meet a police, one of them at 57 miles an hour in a 55. He'll pull you over and write you a ticket. The other one, you meet him at 62 or 63, throw his hand out and wave at you. Uh, you know, so it, it all depends and it's nothing but uh, more or less a money game and how these trucks are registered uh, with the uh, Department of Motor Vehicles 
And it's basically all that sticker's about. That's why it's at 9,900 pounds. Uh, it's below the 10,000 pound gross vehicle weight uh, rating of uh, the trucks that these trucks are classified as and all that good stuff. Uh, it saves on insurance and registration fees and all that bunch of hooey. So anyway, now that I'm done with all that rambling, let's get to uh, putting some airbags on and check these things out. I want to get a measurement before I start on the back and the front of the vehicle on the fender wells and see where I'm at on that and then we're going to get pull this stuff out of the box and get started putting it on. Alright guys, we have got on the front of the truck from the top of the tire here to the bottom of the fender eight and a half inches and if we come off the floor we have got about 41 right there and this truck has the torsion keys cranked up and 33 inch tires on it. So we'll go to the back here and see what we got on the back. On the back we have 10 and a half inches between the top of the tire and the fender well and from the floor to the fender well we have 43. So we have two inches of rake on this truck as it sits. I think from the factory it had about three and a half inches uh, from what I remember when I bought the truck before I leveled it out and put the one inch block in the back to kind of compensate. And I'll kind of back up here and give you a little bit of a look at it. You can see it's got a little bit of a rake right there. Uh, doesn't look too bad to me. I don't know what, uh, when we put a little bit of air in the airbags, it should give it a little bit more. But it should increase the spring rate as well. So when I add weight, it doesn't sink as bad. And then I can pump them up to set wherever I want it to set, I suppose. All right, guys. This is Ride Right, Firestone Ride Right Model 2250 airbag kit. This is what comes in the kit. You got two airbags, uh, two U-bolt spring brackets, two uh, axle clamp brackets, a bag of hardware, and these are the lower airbag mounts, I believe. And these are like the uppers. And I think that's the heat shield. You get some instructions there that I haven't opened yet and uh, some quarter inch DOT airline and uh, inflation valve bracket kit that I probably will not use. But anyway, uh, I got the package opened up. First thing I know that we got to do is we got to get up under the truck and take off the bump stops off of the frame up under there because they will be in the way of where these things mount at. So let me get up under there and see if I can get those removed. All right, so this is the uh, axle bump stop I'm talking about. It's a 15 millimeter wrench. Uh, this, of course, is your axle right here, your spring. The airbag is gonna mount uh, right where this bump stop's at and uh, sit right here, basically. And uh, that spring U-bolt thing goes around here and comes around. I don't know how me having this one inch block right here is gonna affect things because this truck did not have that from the factory and these are set up for stock applications. So I don't know if I will have to uh, space this in some kind of way or only being one inch, is that gonna make any difference whatsoever? So I guess we'll find out when we get the install in this how that's gonna work out. But basically we just gotta get this uh, bump stop off here first. All right guys, so it looks to me like these are the way it goes. Uh, this is the heat shield for the exhaust pipe. I think it just sits right there and put that all on. These have a, a left and a right stud and holes for these brackets and it looks like the uh, the front, the taller part of the bracket goes towards the front of the truck. You put your air fitting in, you put the two bolts on there, get your heat shield adjusted, tighten it all down and uh, then your bottom bracket here goes on the bottom with one bolt up under there like that. Then your U-bolt goes around your spring and block like that. And then uh, this here goes around the axle, uh, bolts up from the bottom side, I believe, over here on this side, like right there, with two carriage bolts that come in from this way. So you can see how that works, I believe. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do is try to get uh, get all this positioned up under there and uh, go ahead and screw my air fittings in the nuts here get everything kind of as that is an assembly so I can kind of stick it all up in there 
All right, I think it says in the instructions, don't use an impact wrench. So the first thing you want to do is get your impact wrench. That's generally generally the way you do things. Uh, we'll run these down here. I ain't got all day. And I'm gonna kind of leave them loose like so, so that I can get all this positioned up under there. And then we'll snug them down afterwards. Get this air fitting tightened up all that good jazz and we'll go ahead and put the bolt in the uh, bottom bracket here I'm not going to tighten it up because you got to get all this stuff lined up just want to leave it kind of snuggish the reason they have that tapered like that if you don't have enough clearance for that particular bolt they include this one here that you got to tighten up with allen head I think we'll have enough clearance, but if not, we'll have to pull this back out and put the other style in there. But anywho, we're going to uh, finish snugging this fitting up, and then we'll stick this assembly in there and get the bolt started. I don't have the right wrench here to tighten this fitting up. One other thing, these bolts here won't go in here without uh, this being loose. So save yourself the trouble before you get up on the truck. Let's see if we can work it in there now. Not quite. Wrong direction. There we go. Maybe we can get it in there now. So anyway, then these two washers here go up on top of these bolts on top of the frame, and you're done. All right, guys, I've got this stuck in place. I've got the bolts on the top side up here uh, tight. You have to stick a wrench in between here and then one on the top side. And what I found best is a ratchet wrench on one side and a flat regular wrench, normal wrench on the other side, normal box end wrench on the other side. And uh, you want this heat shield positioned uh, closest to the exhaust so that it blocks the heat off of the airbag obviously and then you have to come in once you get get the top bolts tight get this swung over to where it needs to be and then come in from this side over here with the uh, wrench and finish snugging those nuts up on top of the airbag uh, where we put those up there and the air fitting should already be tight and angled in the correct direction which would be this way to be able to get an airline onto it. Um, should have did that on the tailgate. And uh, like I say, just finish snugging those up so the top of the airbag is tight. Uh, the bottom is just hanging out here. Uh, you probably won't have this much slack right here because I had this one inch block. And uh, it looks like I can't use this bolt here. I'm gonna have to use that tapered bolt. So I'm going to have to uh, pull that back out and use the Allen wrench and put that Allen bolt back in. I think some of these trucks have a uh, hole in the top of this uh, pad right here, this bump stop pad. There's a hole cut out and uh, when the hole is cut out like that, you can use this style bolt and it doesn't matter, there's plenty of clearance. This truck does not, so I gotta put the other bolt in there and then put our clamp around our spring here and right here and I'm watching this spider right here on this wheel. I don't know if you can see him there, but he's hanging out above my head right here, so I'm trying to pay close attention to him. Uh, also, I don't want him coming down. Is he moving around there? I don't want him coming around on my head. So I'm trying to pay attention to that as well while I'm installing this and trying to uh, film it at the same time. So let me uh, swap this bolt out right here and get these others, and we'll get this one side here. Uh, snug down tightened up all right guys i've got uh, the bolt in the bottom down here that was a little bit hard to get to i had to push this thing up and uh i had a little bit of a hard time getting that bolt started in there i should have uh, checked that a little bit closer before i put it should have checked made sure there was a hole there which there's not and all that good stuff but learn from my mistakes and uh because i know if you're a guy you're not going to read no directions so anyways uh, this here will slide right down in there 
you just got to turn it like this right here drop it down in there and it'll go right in there like that right there go around that of course you won't have this block here and uh you be able to put your nuts on right here and then this clamp here goes around the axle and snug everything up uh probably snug this one up over here first to pull it down in my application because i got a little bit of a uh, play right there because of this block but i think it's going to work okay uh, but i'm going to go ahead and get this tightened up and then we'll move to the other side and get it finished up as well all right guys i've got the driver side installed here it went a little bit faster uh, for the most part uh, you can go ahead and tighten these on down with your impact or whatever you want to do uh, you don't have to leave them loose the two on the inside on on this side because you don't have the heat shield up under here to get position and all that uh, these you got to tighten up with a wrench and it's a little bit time consuming as well as these here and uh, the instructions say to take this bolt out right here for this brake cable I didn't I got it on there uh, in behind there got a wrench on it was able to snug it up uh, and what I want to do with my airlines is I'm going to put a T in these and T them together. I actually thought that I had a T in stock and because uh, I usually keep some from my 18 wheeler and whatnot. Sometimes I need those and uh, I guess the dog ate the last one I had because I can't find it. Anyway, the passenger side, uh, they give you a little bit of uh, heat shielding to go on your airline. Uh, just kind of use your own judgment on that, I guess. But what I did is come out of the airbag there and kind of loop it over and tied it back on the other side and then got it up against the frame over here way against way away from the exhaust run across and then uh, since I couldn't find my T I uh, said well I'll just install both of them in the uh, the uh, receiver hitch here drill a hole and I did this one first it come out perfect and I drilled a hole in this side here and went to install it when I went to tighten it up it broke off and uh, it broke off where the the nut goes and the uh, the threads right here go and the reason it broke off it wasn't even tight but I didn't pay attention when I drilled my hole here on the back side I'm right up against this plastic and uh, so one edge of it was getting on the plastic and it didn't even feel snug but it was pulling it out of angle instead of being up flush like this one that missed the plastic and uh, so whenever I tightened it up it broke off but I had a valve stem over there and I cut the rubber off of the valve stem and I took a die grinder and tapered the end of it so that it would slide inside of this broke off piece here and then I soldered that piece into this piece and hooked it up temporarily and just put a zip tie on it right here and I'm going to get a T from Napa and T this line here into this line because I want both of these there up together uh, that way if one of them leaks down uh, the truck won't be setting sideways one way or the other that it'll go down evenly and uh, I think that's going to work out best for me if you're trying to to level out an unlevel or un yeah unlevel unweighted unlevelly weighted load uh, from left to right you would want them separate like this but uh, my load is going to be centered on the gooseneck ball, uh, so I want it to pick up evenly uh, because there's only the only thing that's overweight on one side of the other is a fuel tank, and that's not really enough weight to uh, to really matter too much. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this line here and uh, put a T in, and uh, just remove this mess here. They got temporary right there, but uh, anyway. So pay attention to that if you're going to uh, put that through there and make sure you don't do the same thing I did. But Oh well, other than that, it has went pretty well. It wasn't that hard. It's just uh, a little bit time consuming and everything. But I've got everything tied up and secure. I've got about 40, a little over 40 pounds of air in them. And uh, they may be a touch overextended right there with that block uh, with the 40 pounds in them but i think it's going to work okay and i'll probably let 40 pounds the 40 pounds i'll let some of that out because you only required the they say you want like five pounds in them or something empty but uh anywho let me get out from under here and uh i'll show you what it looks like from the outside all right guys this is the outside of the truck here on the passenger side and we were at 41 no 
43, 41's on the front, we were at 43 a while ago. We were at 42 and three quarters with uh, a little over 40 pounds in it. And that is 11 and a quarter there. We were 10 and a half earlier. And the way these things are supposed to work, you're supposed to air them up with a load on it to get your PSI uh, correct. But uh, what I'm hoping is because your, uh, your pressure is going to rise when you put a load on it. So I think that when I put a load on it, that this 40 PSI I got in there is going to go up to probably 70 PSI because you're compressing the bag and the air has nowhere to go. And that's the way you're supposed to check the pressure and it's with a load on it. But what I'm hoping is to find a happy medium. I don't know how it's going to ride. I'm going to take it down the road in a little bit and see. But I'd like to find a happy medium if I can run like 25 or 30 pounds in an empty hook up to the trailer when I put the weight on it, if that increases the pressure by compressing the bags, you know, to 50 pounds or something, it'll probably be perfect. And I won't have to be messing with it. It's what I'm hoping for. But uh, there does not seem to be a very large volume of air in those bags at all. Uh, like when you put a air gauge on it to check it, uh, just a little bit of, psh, I mean, it, that drops it like four or five pounds right there. Uh, so there's not much air in there and I don't know how often I'm going to have to air them up and uh, if it becomes an issue I will get a compressor but I'm hoping that it'll uh, it'll work without one for a little while so I guess we'll see anyway I'm going to take this thing down the road and see how she rides figured I'd get one more shot of it here uh, with air in the bags before I uh, take it down the road and you can see it's still a little bit more rake to it uh, than it did three quarters of an inch and I think like I say, it probably ease down in the bags a little bit to get it down about 25 pounds. Probably dropped me on down to only about a half inch higher than it was. And uh, that's still less rake than the truck had from the factory. So uh, anyway, let me put my tools up and uh, take it down the road and see how it rides. All right, guys, I went and drove it down the road, hauled the garbage off. Uh, and surprisingly, it rode pretty well. I was expecting it to be pretty harsh with that much air in the bags. But uh, for being a one-ton truck, uh, I didn't think it was too bad. I think it's still smoother than what my Dodge three-quarter ton is, honestly, and it's definitely smoother than the 18-wheeler, so that's what I got to compare it to. Uh, if you're used to a half ton, it's probably rough riding, but uh, didn't do too bad. Anyway, I got the gooseneck hooked up here, and uh, I'm going to drive the tractor on the back of it here on the gooseneck and see, uh, let you watch, see how much it compresses, and we're going to get a measurement on it, and we're going to check the pressure in the bags again to see how much the pressure increases when I put the weight on it. So uh, I guess to start with, we'll get a measurement with it like it is with a gooseneck on there. Uh, we got one a while ago before I put the gooseneck on there. So let's get one right here. We're at 43. So I think a while ago it was 43 and three quarters. So just drop the gooseneck, squat it at three quarters of an inch. That's back where we were before we put the airbags with no weight on it. So. Uh, I'm going to drive the tractor on there in the position that I know where I had it when I weighed it at the cat scale. And I'll know that's 3,000 pounds of uh, pin weight on it. And I'll uh, let you guys watch here and see what she does. that is exactly where I had it uh, last time when I weighed it exactly five foot um, I think last time was five foot one inch I'm at five foot and three quarters of an inch so pretty much the exact same spot as last time so I know that's 3,000 pounds of pin weight on there as it sits and uh, let's get a measurement here
Hold it two inches. That is 10 inches from the top of the tire and the wheel wheel. And it was a 10 and a half before the airbags with no load on it. So it is setting a half inch lower than what it was with no load on it and no airbags. And we've got 3,000 pounds of pin weight on that gooseneck sitting there. What I want to do now is check the uh, pressure back here and see what, how much loading that up has increased the pressure in the bags. So it's just above, it's just above 50 pounds right there. And uh, it was 40, a little above 40 before, so that increased the pressure in the bags about 10 PSI. So that ought to give me a basis point. And uh, I'm actually gonna pull this thing a little bit further forward uh, just for the video. That's with the tractor bucket all the way to the neck right there. So I pulled it up five foot. And we're going to uh, get a measurement on the, the height here and the pressure on the bags. Increased the bag pressure to about 60 pounds. And the truck is sitting about level right there, but I wouldn't drive it right there because I know that's way over the axle weight. I suspect it is. That's with the tractor all the way forward with the loader sitting on top of the net. Uh, my friend Jake with the New Holland and the green 5410 John Deere, uh, he actually will haul his stuff like that with that uh, Ram 3500 dually he's got. Uh, he'll drive that New Holland all the way to the front and set the loader on the net and he will put the 5410 behind it because there's plenty of room behind it back there as you can see. There is enough room behind this you could actually put another tractor on there with that setting like that. Uh, and he actually has a 32 foot trailer uh, which is three foot longer than this one. So you could see you could uh, you could load another tractor on there behind the dovetail because that's dovetail five foot this piece of metal here is five foot so that's ten and you got about almost two foot here and then most of the time uh, he don't have anything on the three-point hitch when he holds him that way so you would actually have about 13 foot right there so you could get a small tractor uh, loaded behind that tractor if you had enough truck to do so with anyway let's get a measurement on the uh, 
the height again there on the pressure again. That's 90 pounds. That is compressed uh, air pressure in the bag to 90 psi. So they're only rated at 100. I'm sure you could put a little bit more in that than that, but that's pushing the limit of what those bags can do. And those bags are rated at uh, 4,800 pounds. So I would think that I've probably got. Man, I, I bet there's. Uh, I'm trying to think, that tractor weighs 12,000 pounds and I have it uh, sitting all the way forward on the neck. So I'm thinking there's probably 7,000 pounds of pin weight on that if I had to guess. So there's probably, I would say that rear axle rate's probably 10,000 pounds right now. If I were a betting man, I would bet there's 10,000 pounds on that rear axle. It doesn't look like it probably because uh, that's what those airbags will do, is hide, hide it from you, but I know there is because I weighed it with the tractor way back to the back of the tractor. You guys have seen that video of me going across the cat scale with the tractor sitting across the, the axles on the trailer, uh, and I was at 6,000, right at 6,000 pounds on the rear axle, so I can guarantee you that uh, I'm around 10,000 pounds on that rear axle the way it is. Alright guys, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I'm pretty happy with what I see so far with the testing I've done, driving the tractor on there, getting the measurements and all that stuff. Uh, I, like, I like what I see so far and driving it down the road, emptying everything. Uh, it does not seem to ride too bad. Uh, what I'm hoping I can do is just get a, a T and T those two airbags together. I'm not worried about the stability side to side deal. Uh, you know, I could see if you had a, a slide in camper you'd be more a little bit worried about that. I don't think that's gonna be an issue for me. I wanna tee both of them together and use the same uh, air valve to put air in both of them so they come up the same time and leak down the same and all that. So uh, that should, if I, if I can run 30 to 35 PSI in those bags and uh, then when I put a load on it, you know, they come up to 50 or 55, somewhere in that range. I think that's gonna work perfect for me and I won't have to be adjusting them up and down because I don't want to, every time I load the tractor up, have to air the airbags up. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it's just an extra step. If you're not close to the air compressor, you really don't want to have to do. So if I can leave them at 30 something, and then when I load it, you know, it compresses the air, it makes it 50 something, and it gives me enough spring rate to, uh, to do what I need to do without the truck sagging, I'll be pretty happy with that. And uh, then maybe down the road, we're looking to getting a compressor, if not, or uh, if it works, then we won't worry about it. But uh, I do have a portable compressor that I can throw in the truck. It's actually my Dodge that I can throw in the truck if I have to air them up. Uh, and I'm not beside my shop compressor or, any, or whatever. But uh, I think I may have a picture of my friend Jake's uh, Ram 3500 with those two tractors loaded on a gooseneck. It does not have airbags. But that sucker's got one heck of a set of springs on it uh, in comparison to these single wheel trucks. Uh, 
If I can find it, I'll throw it in the end of the video here for you guys that might like to see that. So uh, anyway, if you've watched this long, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.